Hello, my name's Fraser and I'm with Lonesome Dog Studios and today we're going to be looking at automation tips and tricks in Pro Tools. So to get started, we're just going to check out what this section sounds like before we've done any automation at all. There's a little build up into a drop. Nothing inherently wrong with that at all. It's pretty natural as it was recorded, but we can definitely do some stuff to enhance this section. So the first thing I would be looking at doing is a simple one, fade up this drum fill into the break. And there's a few ways you can do that. The quickest and easiest way would be to zoom in, find that's where the snare is, command F, and just have a little ramped fade up on this section of drums. So that will just give us that extra build up, a bit more dynamic content and help the drop slap a little bit. So we'll just check it out with that one change there. Already that one tiny process has made that drop feel a lot more weighty. That's one quick way to add a bit of energy to a section. So the next thing I'll be looking at is the use of automation. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is the bass guitar. So what I've got loaded up here, the Pro Tools stock lo-fi plugin. It's a distortion saturation and noise plugin. And it's very basic, but I find it very useful. And one little trick that I figured out a little while ago, if you just turn this distortion knob here by 0.1 it seems like such a stupid amount but automating this in on the drop similar to the drums is enough to give the bass a little bit more weight so the way we want to do that in Pro Tools is we open up this window here next to the bypass button we select my master bypass and then we can add that to our automation channel and hit OK and then we come back to the edit window and then on the bass channel we drop down here and open up the master bypass channel so now we can see it's there and because it's blue we can tell it's already bypassed so what we want to do is we go into the drop find it right here i'm holding command to add and then we can just turn it on right on the drop there just like that so then we can check that out now with the lo-fi plugin just kicking in on the drop I'll just quickly a b what that plugin's actually doing like i said a tiny tiny amount tiny tiny amount but that little 0.1 distortion there just adds some harmonics and some fullness to the bass The next one we're going to use is the same process, but what we would be using is the decapitator this time on the guitar track. So I've already dialed in some quite conservative settings. We can just AB that on the guitars. So without. So when doing stuff like this, we do have to be careful that we're not adding gain if we don't want to be adding gain. In the case of the bass, we did want to add a little bit of gain that came with the plugin, but when we're using the capitator, we just want to push the mids a little bit more and not really overload any more actual gain and mess the mix up a little bit. And then it's the same process as last time. We'll go into that window, select bypass, add it to the automation channels and hit OK. To the edit window, select the drop and zoom in pull up the decapitator automation hold command and just pull that down there line up on the drop like so and then that should flick on as the drop hit so let's check it out just brings them forward a little bit more especially because you know, we're enhancing because we're enhancing the bass in a similar fashion, we need to do something with guitars to make sure that that balance is there and make sure that this section is slapping. 
And so the final little automation trick I use in Pro Tools has a little bit to do with my routing as well. So you may have noticed that when I load up a session, I'll have my audio tracks and I will send them all to a AUX bus, which I call my mix bus, which goes before my master. So I'm effectively adding a gain stage so that we can automate the overall volume of the mix without having to lock the fader to automation we can still adjust the the output of the mix with the master fader here so if we need to pull something down to send to someone or for mastering or anything like that we just have more options so i think that's quite valuable what that allows us to do is if we go back to our edit window and then on the mix bus we open up the volume automation lane similar process as last time we'll zoom in where the drop is and we'll add a marker on the drop and then we'll have one immediately behind it. And we want to bump it. 1.1 is absolutely fine for this here. So then same again, we'll check that out now with the little 1.1 dB boost. Like I said, because we were automating our mix bus channel, we can still do whatever we want here with the master fader causes us no problems at all and with all of these techniques stacked up i think we made a good drop a great drop and that's what these little tips for mixing are about so thank you i've been fraser for lonesome dog studios and i'll see you next time